Hello, welcome back to Cloud and Web Developer. Carlos here. Today, I want to show you a project I made with ChatGPT API, which is recently public now. So, however, it is not for free and something that I need to let you guys know beforehand. So, as you know, ChatGPT has been released since November 30th last year and it has changed the world, essentially the way many people do things around, including myself. And now for the last couple of weeks, the API is now available. I pay the $20 a month premium chat GPT just to get faster responses, uh, preference when there's a lot of traffic in the servers. Uh, I get access, early access to the features that they release, right? So that's awesome, but it's not mandatory. And the thing is this API is a different uh, fee. So I'm paying the $20 a month and that still doesn't cover the API. So for the API, you need to have another billing account. And to do that, I'm just going to briefly explain here because I'm sure it's self-explanatory. I don't want to spend too much time on this, but you go to platformopenai.com and essentially what you want is to end up with one of these API keys. So I'm going to click here and I can see I have two API keys so you cannot see the full thing, but you need to create one and then copy that and set it aside, put it somewhere that is private that nobody can use it because if somebody sees that it can be misused. Somebody can use your credit for their purposes. So API keys have to be handled carefully. So if you're in this video, you probably know that. And in here, just make sure you have your payment method and it's not very expensive. Essentially, uh, they, they count tokens. What is a token? Token is essentially about four letters. So they say a thousand tokens is 0 0.0002 cents. So it's still incredibly reasonable and cheap. However, be careful with your APIs, no matter what. So once you have your API key, I'm going to show you this, this uh, application that I created. So as you can see here, I have a basic health and lifestyle questionnaire here, and uh, I'm kind of like allowing the user to click on these answers and input their height, weight, age, things like that. And what I want is ChatGPT to become some kind of like a health advisor, right? And, and I'm going to focus it to cancer, but it could be focused to whichever you want. It could be like weight training, could be like, you know, better sleep, things like that. So for this purpose, and I have put it in the repository is for cancer. So what matters is how you ask those questions to ChatGPT. All right. How does this work? I'm going to show you next. So the first thing you need to do is to go to my repository and download it. And because all the code is there, essentially everything you need is right there. You can tweak it, you can modify it however you see fit. The interesting part is really the, the API connection and the way you send things and receive things from ChatGPT. So what I've done is I created a Flask Python application, app.py. And you can see this repository has also the requirements folder which is essentially Flask, Request, OpenAI, and .env, which is a library I'll explain briefly as well, why is it used. Uh, there is also inside the templates folder, there is a form and there is a result. So two HTML uh, pages that are here. And then uh, you also need a static folder and they need to be called the static and templates. Otherwise it won't be the default location. And then in here, I'm going to put my style CSS completely optional. I mean, I'm not going to spend time in CSS today. It's really more what I want to show you is here in the app.py and a little bit of the form HTML. Okay. So quickly, just the form, the quickly, just the form right here. So obviously you have your title and um, essentially what I'm doing here is a form. It's a form that has labels and inputs. So in the label, you essentially show what you want to be written and the input is where you need to be careful. The input is where you're adding a type, uh, the ID, a name, right? So each of these names needs to be uh, different from each other because that's how you're going to handle that data on the Python side, on the back end. And so on and so forth, right? And I have a loading spinner. So once you send a request to uh, ChatGPT, ChatGPT is going to take about 20 to 20, 30 seconds to, to respond to you. So, so I want to put something visual for the user to know that it's something is going on. Like it's not stuck. You just need to wait a little bit. Okay. So that's pretty much the HTML side of it. And the other HTML is the results, which is essentially, I put the CSS on the top, but it, once again, what it does is I wanted to divide it into sections, right? Like the answer of chat GPT, I want to divide it into introduction, exercise, diet, sleep, communication, blah, blah, blah. Again, completely optional for you. 
So it's a very simple question and then a button that can send you back to the beginning to start all over again, okay? Okay, so let's go from the beginning. So you have your uh, imports, right? You need to import OpenAI because this is gonna this is gonna help you communicate with OpenAI API. And uh, dotem uh, essentially, what you need to do in here is to add your API key somewhere here. If you're not gonna share your repository anywhere, I mean it's okay to hard code it here, right? But if you want to put it on GitHub, especially in a public repository somewhere that people can see your code, it's 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 really terrible practice to do that. So what you need is one something like this, uh, an environmental variable uh, library. And what it allows me to do is I can create a .env file, and in that .env file, I can just essentially copy paste the actual key, right? And that .env file is not going to go to GitHub. Right, but you have to put it wherever you want to run this. If it's local in your computer or if it's on a remote server, you have to put it manually, essentially that dot m in the server in the same folder, because you won't be able to pull it through through Git, right? Because in Git, it's already telling it in the Git ignore to essentially ignore that. So do not version that. Okay, let's let's keep going. Let's go to that interesting part. Okay, so essentially the main route is gonna render the form HTML that I show you. Uh, briefly ago, right? And so the user is going to see the questionnaire. And now when the user clicks on the submit button, it's going to call this route, the uh, slash submit with the method post, all right? And what I'm doing here is essentially, remember those names uh, from the form that I told you were important? So here they are, height, weight, gender, walk exercises. And they're important because you're getting them from the form and saving them into a Python variable of your choice. I recommend just to keep the name uh, similar, if not the same, for you to kind of keep track of what's going on. Right, so I'm just getting the answers of the form, and then this is probably the most important and interesting bit. Okay, what I'm gonna do, as you see in ChatGPT, you type your text and then you get an answer. So this is essentially what we need to do, but in the backend, in the API, right? So I'm creating a my text paragraph. So the, this paragraph is gonna call my text. And in this first line, I'm telling ChatGPT, every time I send this request, this is what's gonna go. So prepare some lifestyle advice for the prevention of cancer. And again, you can change this to weight training, sleep deprivation, whatever. For a person with the following characteristics, and then because it's an F string in Python, you can concatenate uh, these, uh, interpolate these variables. So I'm getting the patient height, which we got here, and we got from the form and uh, weights this many kilos. Similarly, it's a variable from the form, age, gender, right? And then this is also very important. Depending on how you phrase this is the answer you're gonna get from ChatGPT. This person took the following lifestyle and medical health history questionnaire and next to each question is the answer obtained. Uh, your essay, please separate it into introduction, exercise, sleep, diet, communication, alcohol, hobbies, mental health, and conclusion sections, right? So ChatGPT is now aware that what I want. I want an essay, and it, I, I want the essay to be separated in these uh, subsections. And then, this is not all, right? Because now we still need to send ChatGPT the information that we want it to consider to personalize this to some degree for this person. Right, so I'm continuing my text plus equals, so concatenate text to this original text in the first line, and I'm adding another F string, and I'm kind of dividing it into physical activity, there's a section for diet, there's a section for sleep, and I'm adding essentially the questions from the form and the answer that I, uh, that I, that I, re that I received from the user. So. ChatGPT is gonna read, how much do you walk every day, question mark, and then within the answers of walk, whichever the, the patient uh, answer, right? Maybe the answer is less than 15 minutes. Let's assume that the patient said less than the 15 minutes. So in here it would say less than 15 minutes. And then in here it would say the answer for this question. And the answer for this question about fruits and veggies and legumes and sleep. So I'm composing a paragraph, right? So uh, an introduction of what I want, with the information that I want. And so this paragraph is gonna be tailor-made to these reasons that this person has input. Right, and this is how you actually call, so this is how you do the request. So you, the URL is fixed to this one right here, 
slash completionists and the payload this is where you can still tweak things around okay so the model is chat gp3 3.5 turbo which is da vinci i think is the best one uh, the more is the one that costs 0 0.0002 cents per a thousand tokens and then in here uh the role user you can read the description maybe i, I will probably will just skip this bit ahead like this works for most cases right so you're kind of like asking him as, uh, chat gpt as a user something like that and then content as you, as you see if i select this is this so the paragraph that we built so in here is essentially your questions to chat gpt after you have put it together grab it from the form this is the question you want to ask and if i wanted to test i was using this like my cat uh, why is my cat so cute i would just kind of copy and paste it here and it would ignore all these my text and just send my cat the question here right so but you don't need to do that anymore so i'm just going to revert it back to my text temperature okay temperature what i read is that you want to keep it between 0.5 and 1 because between temperature and top p is the randomness the creativity of a chat gpt so the more higher the temperature the more nonsensical or random things like less focused the answer is going to be less focused stream on the website of chat gpt as you can see the answer is being displayed like i don't know line by line letter by letter quickly uh, i found that if i leave this as true it doesn't quite work very well. I was getting errors, so I just put it false. Because essentially, I'm just waiting for the whole answer to come back and then display it, right? So so I, I would leave it at false. You can, you know, experiment with all that. Headers, very uh, normal. So content type, application JSON, authorization, the better. And uh, you have to put this, your, your API key, right? So this is kind of coming all the way up. So open AI library and the API key. Perfect. And then the response, right? Uh, Response.post, the URL, which is this one, uh, the headers that you set up here, the payload in JSON, and the stream is false, right? And this is what actually sends the post request, finally, right? And then, um, in my case, I like put print, print statements. You can delete them. And the reason why it says response is because it's easier to find in the terminal when you have too much text. Uh, developers might know what I'm talking about. <laughs> so, and then I'm printing the response as it's given back to me in, uh, in, um, in Python, right? In the terminal. So if the response is okay, then what you're gonna do is to uh, JSONify, right? And once again, I'm printing everything at every step. Just wanna see what the data looks like at every step of the way. And then because I have to, like, you not only get the answer in text like you have to you know parse that uh, library a uh, uh, dictionary or json object right to get the exact text which is uh, which is here generated text so generate text is essentially going to the response data choices zero message content strip so it's really going into that object with a lot of elements to it and just grabbing the the answer that i want because it's really the um, it's really the text because among uh, other things in this response, you will see how many tokens you used. So it's useful information. So that's why I like to print it to keep it for my own purposes. But I'm not going to display that to the user. For the user, I will just focus on the text, which is essentially all this string of information here. And I save it in generated text. And then finally, I'm going to return. I'm going to render the template. Yeah. So results HTML and I'm sending the generated text value right here. And if if the response is not OK, so it's going to skip all this, go into the else statement and it's going to return an error, you know, error call and open AI and, you know, something went wrong. So you need to investigate. And in my case, so I'm running it in localhost, port 5000 and debug through. So in debug mode, it's cool because if it crashes, it'll just restart. So this is for a development server, right? Okay, so now that you have all this more or less like understood and you saw the whole code, how do you execute it? If you wanna execute it as it is right now, okay, so the first thing you need to do is to, after you pull this, what you need to do is to create a virtual environment in Python. So I'm in the right folder, oops, kind of here in the terminal. Yeah, I'm in health GPT, okay? So 
I'm gonna create a virtual environment. with Python 3.8, that's the version I have in my machine, and it's gonna be called Venv. Okay, it's created, and to activate that virtual environment, dot Venv bin activate. If you're new to Python, virtual environments are helpful because you create a special, like a space in your disk, and you install libraries into this space only without affecting the rest of your computer. So after I activate the Venv, you're, you'll see now my line of command has a Venv uh, in, in parentheses, and that means that I'm ready to start installing libraries. Now, I need to install these libraries right here. So what I do is pip install recursively requirements.txt. So everything that's in this .txt file. Alright, and you can see it installed everything that we needed. Perfect. Okay, so now the next thing you need to do is to create a .env file because as I say you need to put your API file in a dot end file so I'm here in the root folder I'm gonna create uh, new file and I'm gonna call it dot env okay and in here I'm just gonna show you what I need to put okay so this is essentially copy pasted from the website that I was showing you at the very beginning of the video and as you can see now dot end what it does is gonna come to this file and it's gonna kinda like grab the actual API and it's gonna call it these names. And then in your app.py here at the top, see, it's getting it from the operating system, get env, these two variables. So open AI organization, open API key, which is essentially what I call them here. Okay, I'm gonna delete these API keys, so don't try nothing. <laughs> and you should, if you leak them or you're in suspicion, you should just generate a new one and delete the one that you have to be safe. And I'm gonna run with Python app.py. Okay, and it tells me that it's running in localhost at 5000. So I can go onto a new, new window, paste, go. And as you can see, um, I'm there. So I'm just gonna put side by side my code. And so you can see the terminal too. Cool. So, all right. So let's let's try it out. So it's uh, 45. No, it's in centimeters, right? So um, I'm I'm 190, of course. I weigh I don't know. I weigh like 80 kilos. I'm 18 years old. <laughs> I I drink alcohol. Eh, so this is a lie. I don't I don't do any of that. I'm a pretty healthy person. Uh, just a little, generally. Okay, you you would do this more seriously, right? every time and if I submit I have my, my my spinner telling me like wait wait it's happening this is not stuck and you can see in the terminal this is my text this is how chat GPT is gonna receive the information right chat GPT didn't see anything else but this so based on this it's gonna generate an answer and it does so I get an answer back and this is the answer I got See how it's separated in hobbies, alcohol, communication, blah, blah, blah. And then this is the full response data. See how it has more. So an ID, an object, created, model, the prompt tokens, completion tokens, total tokens. So this cost me about 0 0.0002 cents, right? And then within choices, here is your answer. Here is uh, what you want, okay? You know, it's it's amazing. And honestly, this is just the tip of the iceberg because what I wanted to show you is how now you can play with it on the back end with API. So you're not bound to the browser version of it. Okay, guys, well, I hope you liked it. If you do, please like, comment, subscribe. And I do these videos on a weekly basis now. I'm trying to focus more on these uh, YouTube videos. I love them, I enjoy them. And if you do too, well, let me know. This is Carlos for Cloud and Web Developer. Have a great day. Bye-bye.